we feel it would be a little unkind to present this game without just a word of friendly warning. You are about to unfold one of the strangest tales ever told. We think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now's your chance to... Well, we warned you. Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. As anybody who follows my channel should know, last weekend Games Workshop announced the new Warhammer Quest. It's called Cursed City. And with all the gothic horror goodness that game promises, I thought that was a good enough reason to do a playthrough of what has quickly become one of my favourite cooperative games. It is Horrified. And I just want to point out, I actually hurt my knee earlier in the week and I've got to stand up to shoot this playthrough. So I am actually putting myself in a very small amount of mild discomfort to bring you this playthrough. That's how much I love you all. But anyway, I have actually already featured Horrified on my channel. I did one of my deep dives into the contents of the box and talked about the game in general. And it really has become a firm favourite in my household. It fits into that same space that Space Marine Adventures Labyrinth of the Necrons fits into, in that it's incredibly quick to set up, incredibly quick to play, incredibly quick to teach and learn. It's straightforward enough that you can play it with non-gamers and children, but I think there's enough going on that even if you're really into your games, this is a good light filler cooperative game. It's one of those games where you always know what you need to do, it's just figuring out the best way to do it. And really the whole game revolves around collecting items and then using them to complete different challenges from the monsters that you have in play at the time and then to finally defeat those monsters. What I have set up here is the easy introductory game which pits you against Dracula and the creature from the Black Lagoon. Normally you would play against three monsters and it can be any combination of the monsters, although it is possible to actually have four monsters on the board for a really challenging game. So there is a nice sense of being able to scale the game to whichever type of players you're playing with. Playing with my daughter, a random pick of two monsters gives us a light evening's entertainment without too much stress, but then you can add in those extra monsters to make it more challenging as you need. I've already laid out the board to do that. I have positioned Dracula in the crypt. I have positioned coffins for Dracula in four locations around the board. I have placed the creature from the Black Lagoon in his lagoon, and I have placed the boat for our mission to find him on the tracker over here. I've already randomly selected two characters. We have the Professor and the Archaeologist. Both of these characters have four actions each, and they also have a special action they can use. The Professor has the ability to move any hero or villager one space for an action, whilst the Archaeologist can use a pickup action to collect items from adjacent locations, making him very good for hoovering up those items that might be in the more awkward places to reach. They also both get a perk card and those perks can be used once per game and they can be used on any player's turn. For example, if the archaeologist has got a card he wants to play, but it's the professor's turn, the archaeologist still has the ability to play that card. The professor's perk is conduct an investigation, which lets you choose a space with a hero on it and then move any number of heroes to that space. The archaeologist's perk is hurry, which lets you move each hero up to two spaces. I've already randomly determined that the Professor will start the game, and at the start of the game, Dracula will be enraged. To defeat Dracula, we have to smash the four coffins that are on the board. To do that, we have to collect red items that add up to a value of six or more, and then discard them at a coffin location to smash the coffin. Once all four coffins are smashed, we need to go and locate Dracula and discard items that are yellow and add up to six to finally defeat him. For the creature of the Black Lagoon, we have to traverse around the lagoon on our boat, and we do that by going to the campsite, which is just up there. And whenever we discard an item at the camp, we can move our boat along the route to the next cross that matches the colour of the item we just used. Once we have located the creature's lair, we need to 
stand on his space on the board and then discard one yellow item, one red item and one blue item of any value to finally defeat him. That's what we're doing. Let's get started. It will all become very apparent as we play through because it's a very, very streamlined and straightforward and efficiently put together game. We begin the game with the professor's turn and looking at the state of the board, there's something I think I'm going to do straight away. The start of the game is key for the collection of items. There are 12 items on the board and you do not have any in your possession at the beginning. You need to very quickly pick them up. Those items will be used to defeat the monsters, but also fend off attacks from monsters. So the first few turns of the game, when you don't have many items, you are more at risk. It's a really good idea to not even worry too much about the colors of the items to begin with, but just to grab as many as you can, as quickly as you can. And that means before the professor does anything, the archeologist is going to play his perk card. The perk card says, move each hero up to two spaces. I'm going to move the professor like so, and I'm going to move the archeologist from his starting location at the docks to the theater. Having done that, the professor continues his turn. We get four actions. I will explain actions as I'm doing them rather than reel them all off now. But again, they're all pretty obvious what they do. I'm going to move. I'm going to use my second action to pick up items. When you use the pickup action, you can collect as many items as there are on your space. You don't need to use one action per item. The good thing here is I have already collected two red items that add up to six, which is enough to smash a coffin. I have two more actions, so I'm going to move and move again. If I had one more action, I would of course pick up that silver cane, but that's it for me. The professor's turn is over, so we go into the monster phase. There is a monster phase after every hero's activation. There are three pieces of information on the cards. At the top, it shows how many new items you draw from the bag and place on the board, so we will do that in a moment. Next, we have an event. In this case, we are going to place Fritz at the tower. Fritz is a villager. If Fritz is attacked and killed by the monsters, then the threat level increases in the village. If the threat level exceeds six, it's game over for us. Finally, down at the bottom, we have the monster activations. This set of icons means that the monster will activate, then the bride will activate, then the enraged monster will activate. Of course, the monster and the bride are not in our particular game, so we ignore those. But Dracula is enraged, so he will move one space and then attack with two dice. Our three new items are a centrifuge for the laboratory, a knife for the docks, and a crucifix for the church. Here is our Fritz standee. We will place him at the tower and we can see that he wants to get to the Institute. If we can get him to the Institute, he will of course be safe from the monsters, which means the risk of our threat level increasing goes down, but also the hero who returns him to safety will get to draw a perk card and the perks are always useful. Finally, Dracula, who is down here in the crypts, will move one space and attack with two dice. He moves to the Abbey. There are no villagers or heroes on that space, so he doesn't make an attack action and the monster phase ends. And that's it. It now goes to the archeologist's turn. That's how quick and easy this game plays. For the archeologist's turn, the first thing he is going to do is use his pickup action to collect the red item from the barn. Because of his special ability, he doesn't actually have to be in the location to pick up the item. He only has to be adjacent. And the red item in question is a rifle with a strength of six, which is enough to smash a coffin. He is now going to use two actions to move up to the dungeon in the top right corner of the board, and then he will use his final action to smash the coffin. And you will see that as I have passed by the tower, I have scooped up Fritz with me. Whenever you leave a space that has villagers in it, you can drag villagers with you. And it's a good idea to keep them with you because you protect them from the monsters, because the monsters will always attack heroes rather than villagers. Not that I think we're really in any risk of being attacked at this moment. But why not? Let's hold his hand for now. And with our fourth action, we discard our rifle. We take our coffin tile. We flip it over to the smashed side and we position it on Dracula's card. Quarter of the way there already. But now it is time to draw a monster card. 
The card we have drawn is the Fortune Teller. First we will place three items on the board, then we will place Maliva at the camp. That's bad news because my heroes are nowhere near the camp, but the creature from the Black Lagoon is very close. Then the Wolfman will activate, but of course he's not in our game. And then Dracula will activate, moving one space and attacking with two dice. These are our new items, and I've got to say I'm being incredibly lucky with the draws here because we have got wine, which will go to the church, a torch, which will go to the barn, and a rapier, which will go to the theater. And as you can see, those red items are very powerful. Here is our fortune teller, Maliva, who wants to get to the shop, which just so happens to be where the professor is right now. Finally, Dracula moves one space. And of course, there is still nobody there. We now move on to the professor's turn, and... We need to do something about Maliva. She is very close to being attacked by the creature from the Black Lagoon and Dracula. They are both just two spaces away from her. And our pulls so far with the monster cards have been quite good, but the monsters can generally move more than one space a turn. And sometimes they even activate twice in a turn. So I don't fancy her chances. The Professor is quite a long way away from her, but he can help her because he has the special action that allows him to move any hero or villager one space. And you can do the same action multiple times. So he is going to set aside his little shopping expedition because he was going to pick up that silver cane. He is also going to set aside his plans to collect the yellow items from the church, which was his next port of call. And instead he is going to use all four actions to move Maliva. It is important to note that when villagers and heroes move into a space with a monster, nothing happens. It is only when a monster is activated by a card and moves into a space with a hero or a villager that the monster will attack. That means we can actually move Maliva through Dracula and reach safety with her, but it costs me my entire turn. For each action I spend, I can move her one space on the board. I have moved her exactly four spaces, which gets her to the shop, which is where she wants to go. That means I can take her off of the board. She is safe for the rest of the game and is no longer in any risk of raising our threat level. Furthermore, I get to draw a perk card and I've drawn a really useful perk. It is the taxi ride, which allows you to place any single hero in any non-water space. It's basically a teleport, which is fantastic when you're trying to get to different areas of the board to smash coffins. But it's now time to draw a monster card. We have Dracula's Hypnotic Gaze. First of all, we place two items on the board. Then we have to move the hero or villager closest to Dracula three spaces towards him. And then there's a bunch of activations for monsters who are not in this game. We have the mummy and then the invisible man. But then the creature from the Black Lagoon will move one space. Our new items are an experiment for the laboratory and an anatomy text for the Institute. The closest hero or villager to Dracula is indeed the Professor, so he is dragged into Dracula's space. And then the creature from the Black Lagoon will move one space and he has to move closer to a hero or villager. Of course, the Professor is the closest target, which means we have a choice of either going to the Abbey or the Bridge. I'm going to move to the Abbey because it puts the creature a little bit further away from the archaeologist and what he's up to. Next up is the archaeologist's turn. He is going to move one space to the tower. He is then going to use his second action to pick up the items from the docks because remember, he can collect items from adjacent spaces. He is then going to move again to the theater and he is going to pick up the torch from the barn with his final action. And of course, Fritz has gone along with him. And that's a pretty good turn for the archeologist because he has collected enough red items to smash another coffin and he's collected a yellow item as well, which is something else we need to help us finally defeat Dracula. But before we finish our turn, the Professor wants to do something. The Professor is, of course, in the space with Dracula and adjacent to the creature from the Black Lagoon. There's a very high risk he's going to get attacked in that situation. Being attacked isn't the end of the world. You never die and are taken out of the game. But when you take hits, you can either spend items to absorb those hits or you get knocked out, placed in the hospital and the threat level will advance by one. I don't really want any of those things to happen, but there's a very high risk of some of it happening. I'm going to use the perk card that the professor just acquired, the taxi drive. And remember, you can use perks on any hero's turn, even if it's not the hero's turn who actually has the perk. He's going to spend that card and he is actually going to ask the taxi driver to drive him all the way down here 
to the graveyard. That's done a couple of things. First of all, it's got him out of trouble with the two monsters, but also it has set him up to smash the coffin next turn because he has six points worth of red items. And we draw our monster card. First of all, three new items will be placed on the board. Next of all, poor Renfield will arrive at the docks fresh back from Transylvania, raving about the things he has seen. Then Dracula will move two spaces and attack, and then Dracula will move again two spaces and attack. Our new items are a nebularium for the tower, a canopic jar for the museum, and some garlic for the inn. Poor Renfield arrives at the docks. Who will help him get to the hospital? When I talked about this game in a previous video, one of the things I said I absolutely loved about it was the way everything was so beautifully integrated into the theme. And I think this particular card proves part of what I'm talking about there. Renfield arrives on the board. Of course he arrives at the docks. He's just come back from a foreign country by boat. He is mad at this point from what he has seen. He wants to get to the hospital. So the heroes have to get him to the hospital. So that's the location he has to go. But also his arrival sparks Dracula into action and Dracula immediately takes an action in response to this. It's all just beautifully put together and works really well to tell that narrative. But I digress. Dracula will move two spaces and attack. He is actually the same distance from both the archaeologist and the professor. The archaeologist has a lot more items and is in a position to scoop up a lot more items. But the archaeologist is protecting Fritz and the archaeologist is on a bit of a mission to get things done. Whereas the professor, even if he does get knocked out and sent to the hospital, he's only being moved two spaces across the board. So Dracula is going to head towards the professor who thought he had escaped with his sneaky little taxi drive. Dracula's first action moves him two spaces, but as Dracula is currently the enraged monster, as you can see from the little flame icon on his character sheet, he takes a second action. He will move onto the professor's space and attack with two dice. This game uses custom dice for the monster attacks. We have hits, we have special actions, and we have misses. We are hoping for blanks. That's a single hit. That's a little bit annoying. At this point, I have a choice. I can discard one of my red items to absorb that hit. But if I do that, I no longer have enough equipment to smash the coffin. But if I take the hit, I get teleported to the hospital space and the threat goes up by one. The benefit is, of course, I keep my items. So although it may not seem the most logical thing to do, I'm going to take the hit. The professor faints or something at the sight of Dracula returning to the graveyard. And when he recovers his senses, he is in the hospital. Just over here. And we have to remember to advance our threat tracker. Guess I wasted that taxi drive card after all. Fortunately, the professor suffers no other ill effects and it's his turn again. We're going to move one space. We're going to collect the items from the church. We're going to move again onto the graveyard. That will be three actions. And with our fourth action, we will smash the coffin. That does, of course, leave us in a position where we are standing with Dracula. But I want to get that coffin smashed. The sooner we can get all of the coffins smashed and get Dracula off the board, the easier the whole game becomes because we only have one monster to deal with. The professor enters the graveyard. He is now tooled up with a crucifix and a bottle of holy wine and Dracula can do nothing but stare angrily as the professor uses two fire pokers to smash the coffin up. Again, we flip our counter and we place it on Dracula's card. You are running out of places to hide, fiend. And our two items are discarded. The final thing the professor is going to do is use his final perk card. I am burning through perk cards. Normally I save them, but I'm going to use it because the perk card will allow the professor to immediately teleport up to the same space as the archaeologist. And that means the professor can look after Fritz whilst the archaeologist goes about his business, collecting up items to smash the remaining coffins. This is the card we are using. Conduct an investigation. Choose a space with a hero. You may place any number of heroes in that space. And there goes the professor whisked away from the graveyard before Dracula can retaliate. Our next monster card will place two items on the board and then it is the thief card which is specifically for the invisible man. Because the invisible man is not in our game we ignore this bit completely. 
we move straight down to here. We can see that the mummy will activate, but he's not here. Then the creature from the Black Lagoon, and then the monster. That's a good pick, really. Not a lot going to cause us any problems there. Our two items are a dart from the inn and a mirrored box from the mansion. The creature from the Black Lagoon will move one space. And that's it for him. He's obviously not very mobile at the moment, still getting used to being out on dry land. The archaeologist is going to use one action to collect all of the blue items from the tower. He's then going to move to the fountain, collect all the items from the inn, and then he's going to be so loaded up with items, he's not going to care about the creature from the Black Lagoon, and he's going to go and stand on the bridge, I think. That was an incredibly good turn for the archaeologist, but remember, he was only able to do that because he has the ability to collect items from adjacent spaces, and just happened to be wandering past spaces with loads of items on them. At this point, he is a one-man army, and really, the creature from the Black Lagoon should probably run away from him. And you will notice that Fritz has been left behind, because Fritz is now in the care of the Professor. The Professor is going to look after Renfield and Fritz, and deliver them both home whilst the archaeologist continues his work. Okay, this is an interesting draw. We're going to place two items on the board. Then we ignore this event because it was for the Invisible Man. But we can see down here the creature from the Black Lagoon will indeed move up onto the bridge and will attack with three dice. There's a big hit coming for the Archaeologist. Our new items are the Scroll of Thoth and the Tablet, both for the museum. The creature strikes. For this attack, we roll three dice. Two hits. Now really, we don't want to be giving up red items at the moment because we're smashing coffins. So I am going to discard two of my yellow items. I'm doing that because the Professor has got yellow items which he will need for fighting Dracula, and the Archaeologist needs blue items because they're quite good for advancing along the path to get to the creature's lair. So we discard these two cloves of garlic, and we survive the attack. It's the Professor's turn. The first thing he is going to do, he's going to use his special action twice. And he's going to use that special action to move Renfield from the docks to the space that everybody else is hanging out on. He's then going to use an action to pick up the rapier, because it's always good to have a weapon when there are monsters running around. And then he will move one space down to the bridge, taking the villagers with him, of course. Our next monster card will put two items on the board. There will then be an event for the bride and the monster, but of course they're not in our game. Most of this stuff we can ignore, but the creature from the Black Lagoon will move two spaces and attack. He is already on a space with a hero, so he will stay exactly where he is, and we'll just roll one dice to attack. That's nothing to worry about, really. Our two new items are a kite for the tower and a pitchfork for the barn. The creature attacks the archaeologist. It's another hit. Rolling a lot of hits today. This time I am going to discard a blue item because I don't want to give up all of my yellow items. It's now the archaeologist go. As much as I would like to immediately attack the creature from the Black Lagoon because he's on my space, I'm not allowed to do that. I'm only allowed to attack the creature once I have located his lair. And remember to do that, I have to work all the way along this route with my boat. So instead, I am going to head up into the corner there. It's going to take me two actions to get there. And then I'm going to smash the third of Dracula's coffins. And then for my last action, I will move back onto the camp, which is where you need to go in order to discard items to advance your boat. To smash the coffin, I discard the five and the two, which adds up to seven, more than enough to do it. I'm not really sure. How that dart is helping, I think the torch alone would be sufficient. And then we flip our token and place it on Dracula's board. He really is running out of places to hide now. Van Helsing would be proud. Of course, that only took three actions. As I said, for my fourth action, I will move to the camp. Well, this is rather fortuitous. You can see that first we will put three new items on the board, and then our Egyptian expert, Professor Pearson, will arrive at the cave where we have literally just smashed Dracula's coffin. And then the mummy would activate if the mummy was here, and then Dracula launches into action, enraged at the number of coffins that have been destroyed. Our three new items are a searchlight at the precinct, a fossil at the camp, and a bear trap at the shop. Here is Professor Pearson, 
he will arrive at the caves and wants to get to the museum. Now Dracula moves two spaces. Next up, the professor is going to move two spaces to the laboratory, taking the villagers with him. Now here's the clever thing. Fritz wants to get to the Institute. I don't want to spend an action walking the professor into the Institute and then back out again, but there is a special push slash pull ability where you can either draw in a character from an adjacent space or push them into an adjacent space. So for my third action with the professor, I am going to push Fritz into the Institute. That means I have delivered Fritz successfully to the Institute where he wished to be, and I get to draw a new perk card. The card I have drawn is Show of Force. Either place the creature in any space or move any monster three spaces. This is really good. I may well use this immediately. Looking at the lay of the land, Dracula is very close to the Professor, and also Dracula is still enraged at this point, which means there's an increased risk of him activating. The Professor needs some more equipment. I have one action left. I am going to use that action to scoop up all of these items from the laboratory. Let us fight this fiend with science. Those items are basically chaff that I can throw in the way of any monsters that attack me. And I am actually going to use the card that I just drew, and I'm going to use it to move the creature, because I can put the creature wherever I want. So I am going to teleport the creature all the way over to the dungeon over there. That's going to put him as far away from us as possible, as far out of reach as I can get him. The angry villagers light their torches, they brandish their pitchforks, and they chase the creature across the village and down into the dungeon, where they lose it in the murky depths. The next monster card is a Wolfman card called The Hunt Is On, so obviously we will be ignoring this main part, but two items will appear on the board, and then the creature will activate, then Dracula will activate, and then Dracula will activate a second time. Each time they activate, those monsters will move one space and then attack with two dice. I am not too worried. I have all those blue items to protect the Professor. And the items we have drawn are a knife for the docks and some booze for baby Jesus at the church. The creature moves one space. Dracula stalks the streets. He sights the Professor and attacks with two dice. That's one hit. That's fine, I'm going to discard one of those blue items. He smashed my centrifuge! They're right when they call him a monster. The archaeologist is going to spend a couple of items to start advancing the creature along the lagoon. The most efficient item to discard to begin with is a blue item. That will get you further along the track than any other colour. So he's going to discard a blue. And then after that, the most efficient colour to discard is yellow. So he's going to discard a yellow. Our blue and yellow items are discarded, and the boat advances. The next most efficient colour is yellow again, but I don't have any more yellow items, so I'm going to spend my third action to pick up the yellow item on my space. Finally, I'm going to use the guide action to draw Professor Pearson into my space so I can keep him safe. We've run out of actions, so we have to draw a monster card, and it is Bad News Bears. This is the same type of card as the one we had last turn, and it means that Dracula is going to attack the Professor twice. First of all, we have two new items. We ignore the Wolfman effect. Then the creature, Dracula, and Dracula will move once, attack with two dice. Our new items are a violin at the camp and a camera at the laboratory. The creature advances one space into the theater, then Dracula will attack the Professor, and if I soak that attack and stay where I am, he will attack a second time. It's a double blank for the first hit. I'm happy with that. Second attack. Less happy with that. That's a double hit. I have to discard two items. I will, of course, discard the other two blues that I had. There they go. Easy come, easy go. That actually worked out quite nicely for me, because when Dracula attacks, if he rolls the exclamation mark, he actually lures in the active player to his space, and that would have moved the archaeologist from all the way up there over to here, which I would not have been happy with, so that's a good result overall, and at least it's now the Professor's turn. Ideally, the Professor would like to run as fast as he could to the hospital. He has four actions, he could actually get to the hospital with those four actions, 
and that would actually put Renfield in safety off the board. However, the professor has had his eye on that silver cane since the start of the game and who doesn't want to stop and go for a bit of shopping? So I will actually spend one of my actions scooping up those items as I go by. So it will be move, collect, move, move. I am all set up now to push Renfield into the hospital and then head down into the crypt with my silver cane to smash that final coffin. And then, oh Dracula, you come and fight me then. But apparently, Dracula has sensed my plans. He knows that he is on the brink of defeat. So, he's heading back to the crypt. I mean, that might be the reason. It might just be because it's sunrise. We have no items appearing on the board, but that's okay. I have plenty of items. Uh, Dracula teleports to the crypt, and then he will, because he is enraged, immediately move back out one space, but there will be no one for him to attack. That's fine. Shortest day ever. That all went rather splendidly for the professor, but it is now the archaeologist's go. He is going to start by collecting that violin that's on his space. He is now going to work on getting the boat to the lair. He is going to discard a yellow item to advance to the yellow space. From there, it's a shame, but I'm going to have to discard a red item, which I didn't really want to do. But it will be a yellow item, a red item, and then a yellow item again. That is the most efficient way to get where we are going. We're going to discard all this stuff and hope the people at the camp can give me a few more items to get me the rest of the way. And this is a shockingly bad card and poor Professor Pearson is going to suffer the consequences. First of all, we will place three new items on the board. And then it says on the move. Move the Frenzy Marker to the next monster. That means Dracula will no longer be frenzied. It will be the creature from the Black Lagoon. We then have to move each villager one space toward their safe location. That means Professor Pearson will leave the security of the archaeologist's protection. And then... The enraged creature, who will now be the creature from the Black Lagoon, will advance three spaces and attack with two dice. Our three new items are some analysis for the Institute, a mirrored box for the mansion, and some wolfsbane for the camp. Classic. Next, Renfield will toddle off into the hospital all by himself. He moves one space towards his safe zone, and that gets him in. And in this case, the current player will receive the perk. And that means even though the archaeologist really didn't help Renfield at all, it is the archaeologist who will get the perk. The card we have drawn is Hunter Becomes Prey. We can either move the Wolfman to any space or any other monster three spaces. Unfortunately, Professor Pearson is also affected by On The Move. He will move one space towards his safe zone, the museum, which puts him out on the bridge with a rampaging creature. The creature moves three spaces, and as Professor Pearson is the closest target now, he will go for the Professor. He will then attack with two dice. The Professor has no chance to defend himself. We just have to hope for a double blank. But of course, dice hate me. We've lost our first villager. The creature drags Professor Pearson into the murky waters, and he is never seen again. The villagers are terrified and the threat track increases. We're three for one on saving villagers for anybody who is keeping score. It's the professor's turn and he is fully kitted up as a vampire hunter at this point. He's got enough yellow items to kill Dracula once he has smashed the final coffin. He also has enough red items to easily smash the coffin and has a few red items to spare to use as chaff if he gets attacked. For that reason, Although it's quite risky, I think I'm going to use all four of my movement points to move into the crypt. The safe way to play would be to stop en route and pick up all those yellow items. But fortune favours the bold. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, four into the crypt. If Dracula takes offence to that, I may be in trouble. Also, I'm a little bit worried about the archaeologist at the moment with the uh, creature from the Black Lagoon breathing down his neck. So we are going to use our perk card, Hunter Becomes Prey, to push the creature three spaces away. Here's that card again. Teleport the Wolfman anywhere or move any other monster three spaces. 
and I'm going to have the villagers chase him all the way to the barn. Again, just pushing him back, keeping him out of my way until I'm ready to tackle him. For the professor's card, we get the delivery, and it is my favorite villagers. They've finally arrived on the board. It is Wilbur and Chick, Abbott and Costello. They are going to arrive at the shop, and then our enraged creature from the Black Lagoon will move one space. It's not the best, but it could be worse. We've got a shovel at the graveyard, a kite at the tower, and more wolfbane at the camp. Wilbur and Chick arrive at the shop where they collect a mysterious package, which of course they need to deliver to the dungeon. Finally, our creature moves to the theater. Oh, and by the way, I've just noticed that um, I forgot to move the little flame icon off of the Dracula card to place onto the creature card. I've been remembering, it's only a visual reminder, but Sorry if that's confused anyone. For the archaeologist's turn, he is first going to pick up the two items on his space for one action. He is then going to discard a yellow item followed by a blue item, and that gets our boat all the way to the lair, which means the creature is now at risk. The creature does have the ability to push the boat back from the lair. He will do that if he attacks and rolls an exclamation mark. But otherwise, we just need to get someone on his space with a red, a yellow, and a blue item. These two items are discarded, and the boat arrives at the lair. I have one action left. I'm going to use it to scoop up that blue item that is adjacent to me, just so I've got more items to defend myself. Our monster card is the reincarnated soul. No new items, unfortunately, and a special activation for the mummy, who isn't here. And then Dracula will move one space and attack with two dice. This is in desperation. He has seen that the professor is down in the crypt with a silver cane. He's rushed down to defend his coffin. This is the final confrontation. Dracula rolls two dice to attack. And it's two hits. The professor is stunned. He's reeling. He has to discard two of his red items. We of course discard the weakest ones. But that's it. That was Dracula's last gasp effort, and it was not enough. It is the Professor's turn. For his first action, he uses his silver cane and smashes the coffin. The coffin shatters and the silver cane splits in half with the mighty swing. This gets discarded. The final coffin shatters. And we place this on Dracula's card. That was one action. The Professor's not done. Dracula is reeling from the destruction of all of his hideaways. There's nowhere left for him to go. He has to fight. The professor, I, I don't know, has, has a glass of wine for courage. And then he uses his crucifix to drive the fiend into the sunlight where he is incinerated. Dracula is defeated. The professor still has two actions left. He is going to race to the mansion. Unfortunately, he will not have any actions left to pick anything up. He has no items at all in his possession, so he is at risk. He is still staggered from his victory with Dracula. But hopefully, he can make it to the next round, start collecting items, and then we can go and deal with that creature from the Black Lagoon. And the card we have drawn is a special event for the creature. And it's almost like the creature has predicted that his demise is close at hand. We have no new items appearing on the board and the creature retreats to the waterfront. He will, however, immediately come back out. From the theater, the creature dashes to the river, dives in, and swims down to the waterfront. As he slinks into the water, he hears Wilbur and Chick, probably up to some slapstick nonsense at the shop. He is intrigued and immediately returns to the bridge. It's the archeologist go, and he is going to race down to the space adjacent to the shop, and then he is going to draw Wilbur and Chick towards him, just to try and keep him safe for this turn. Our event card is a reincarnated soul, and it's nothing of nothing for us. No items are appearing, uh, we ignore this event, and as Dracula is dead, we ignore the bottom part as well. The Professor, realizing that the archeologist will require some red items in order to fight the creature from the Black Lagoon, is going to race down to the graveyard 
to grab himself a couple of shovels and he's probably going to grab Wilbur and Chick on the way just to make sure that they're moved away from the creature from the Black Lagoon. I don't think I'm going to get them to the dungeon before the end of the game but I just want to make sure they stay alive at least. Remember, scooping up villagers as you walk by doesn't cost an action if you're going into their space, so that was three moves followed by a pickup action for the shovels. And we have drawn another on the move card. Three items will appear on the board. The frenzy marker will move, but of course Dracula is no longer with us. R.I.P. Drac. And then uh, Wilbur and Chick, because obviously they're not going to do what they're told. They're going to bumble off on an adventure. They move one space away from me um, into danger again. Our three new items are some analysis at the Institute, a telescope at the mansion, and a pitchfork at the barn. Wilbur and Chick move to the church. They're probably too scared to be in the graveyard, aren't they? Finally, the frenzied creature, which is the creature, of course, moves three spaces and attacks. The closest target is our archaeologist, and he attacks with two dice. It's two hits. I really do not want to lose two items, not at this stage in the game. The threat track is so low. We've got so many villagers safe at the moment. I am going to take that hit and uh, the archaeologist is going to put himself in the hospital. Of course, our threat track goes up by one. That was a big hit, but at least we didn't get the boat pushed back from the lair. That would have been the biggest risk there. The archaeologist is obviously the kind of person who isn't going to let being beaten up by a creature from the lagoon slow him down. He's immediately going to leave the hospital. He has a blue and a yellow item, but he doesn't have any red items. That means his plan is to go to the church. That's one action. For a second action, he's going to pick up the wine just because he's probably got a bit of a headache. He is then going to move to the graveyard for his third action, taking Wilbur and Chick with him. And for his fourth action, he is going to trade with the Professor so that the Professor has all of the items for his turn. Then the Professor can run out and beat the creature to death. That's our plan. Let's see how it goes. The Professor is now absolutely kitted out. He's already defeated a vampire. This creature is going to be no problem at all. Well, I suppose I better draw a monster card before I say that. Poor Lucy has arrived in the game. Um, clearly sad that Dracula has met his demise. We're going to put three items on the board. Then Lucy is going to arrive at the theatre. And then our frenzied creature will move twice and attack once. Our three new items are an experiment for the laboratory, a spear gun for the Institute and a stake for the Abbey. Here's Lucy dressed up for an evening at the theatre. Finally, our creature, sensing it's now or never, races through the church grounds into the graveyard to confront our heroes. In this situation, we get to pick who the creature attacks. Obviously, the professor is going to take the hit for the team. It's all kicking off in the graveyard, but the creature is clearly weakened already. He can only muster a one dice attack. It's a strike. Again, that would have been terrible if he had rolled an exclamation mark because he would have pushed the boat back one space. We would have had to have raced up to the camp to find the lair again before we could defeat him. But a hit is fine. We can deal with that. I'm going to discard a yellow item. Let's be honest, I'm probably just drinking it. That is the end of the turn. It is now the professor's turn. The professor has a yellow item, a red item and a blue item. The creature's lair has been discovered. We can send this thing packing. Using a combination of the different items we have found, the knowledge we have gained, the discovery of his lair, our wits and our strength, we chase the creature out of the village and save the day. I only need one action to do that. I have three actions remaining that I do not need to use, but I should imagine I will use them to help Wilbur and Chick make their delivery to the dungeon. And that's it. That's game. That is a win for the heroes. And uh, it went okay. It wasn't perfect. I had a score of three on the threat tracker. We lost one of our villagers, but we saved three. Unfortunately, Wilbur and Chick, we were not able to help. It just wasn't on the cards to get them back to the dungeon. 
and I really didn't need the extra perk anyway, I just had to make sure they were kept safe. The other way you can lose the game besides having the threat track max out is to run out of monster cards in the deck, but we still had a few left, we were fine. Overall, this went okay. But a few things to note, I was very lucky with the attack rolls for the monsters. We didn't get a single special action from the monsters. When Dracula teleports you across the board, or when the creature pushes the boat back from his lair, that can really slow you down, can really put a spanner in the works. As I mentioned, right at the end there, he did attack us. If he had rolled even one exclamation mark, it would have been another couple of turns as I had to collect the right items, get all the way back up to the camp, use those items, get back down to the creature, fight him. It would have taken a lot longer. There would have been a risk of running out of cards. But of course, this is also the introductory game. This is the setup they suggest for when you first play the game or when you first introduce the game to new people. Dracula and the creature are the easiest monsters to deal with. They have the simplest mini games to play in order to weaken them before you can actually confront them. And Dracula in particular is quite easy to deal with. But if you introduce a third monster or even a fourth monster, you can see how it's really going to ramp up. You're gonna have those situations where every turn you're facing attacks because the board isn't that big. But I think this was a nice laid back, chilled playthrough to introduce people to the game and hopefully show you how the game works. We saw pretty much all the mechanisms of the game apart from specific mechanisms related to certain creatures. So if you liked what you saw, you might want to check this one out. But that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you'd already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Not doing that again. Bye.